62 years since the armed forces of Nigeria have marched under the green-white green colors, it is still waxing stronger. Challenged on several fronts and charred by a civil war, the armed forces of Nigeria consisting of the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy and the Nigerian Air Force have remained resolute to its cause, maintaining the nation's territorial integrity and securing its borders from violation on land, sea and air. The armed forces have also played pivotal roles in promoting peace and stability within its boundaries. This is the bed rest on which the country has anchored its economic development. Truthfully, this has been no mere task, especially in the face of global challenges like terrorism, the long-running anti-piracy campaign in the Niger Delta, and the rise of secessionist characters causing some of its men to pay the supreme price. It is for this reason that these fallen heroes are remembered and celebrated every January 15, which is the commemoration of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. The activities for the 2022 edition of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day customarily began with the presidential launch of the emblem. At the event, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, urged Nigerians to celebrate the members of the Armed Forces as the pride of the nation. The emblem, which I will launch shortly, is not only a sign of the sacrifices and bloodshed by officers and men of the armed forces for peace and security in our country. It is also a sign of resolve to remain united as a nation and confront any challenges we may face. It is a sign of our resolve to say no to divisions and embrace one another as a united, indivisible country. On his part, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, retired, said the Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration helps to reassure the families of the fallen combatants that the nation will continue to be with them in paying respect to their departed. The memorial emblem, or the poppy, as it is called in other claims, is a significant part of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration. Its origin as a symbol for honoring fallen heroes dates back to the World War I when Canadian officer John McRae popularized it following his experience at a battle ravaged field in Flanders where puppies were plentiful and grew around the gravesite of the fallen heroes. This presidential launch was followed by launches at different forums, including state houses and parasatos, effectively kick-starting a litany of events to honor the fallen heroes. This includes the Juma prayers and the interdenominational church service, which were heavily attended by important personalities, including the veterans. It is no gain saying that a major reason why the armed forces have remained a bastion of Nigeria's unity and sovereignty is because of his leadership. The rules of the armed forces is enshrined in the Constitution of the Federal Republic, Section 217. And right there, among several other things, the armed forces is to defend the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Additional to this very major and pivotal responsibility is the additional function which is also indicated in the same section that I've just quoted, to which we are to give support to the civil authority as may be demanded by the Commander-in-Chief. Now, this is the provision that has now given more prominence to members of the Armed Forces in internal security affairs. And so, what do you find the Armed Forces of Nigeria doing within the framework of the established provisions of the Constitution? It's 
to ensure that the length and breadth of the country in terms of its territorial integrity is protected. But we also know that the violations against our territorial integrity is not just from outside, you equally have you know, agents of destabilization that perhaps um, undertake um, um, ins internal insurrections. And this is the reason why we are engaged in the various internal security operations that they find across the country. This is uh, an assertion. Uh, I confirm that uh, you will agree with me, even though you are uh, a younger generation, those of us that have uh, lived uh, up to this time, especially when we go back during the unfortunate period of uh, 1996 intervention up to date. Uh, Nigeria has passed through so many turbulence that but for the resilience and resolution of the armed forces of Nigeria, uh, Nigeria will not be what it is today. So to that extent, uh, it is true. And up to this moment, the military remains the only uh, pillar, I would say, but without any fear of contradiction that the military has been the major pillar that holds this country one and when an indivisible uh, country. Upon assumption of office, the leadership of the armed forces of Nigeria developed a philosophy to strengthen joint efforts between all services of the armed forces. This is geared at encouraging synergy and mission combat as essential elements for operational planning and execution for all security challenges requiring military intervention across Nigeria. I'm sure for keen observers like you and many others, I realize that the armed forces remain a family. The services of the armed forces, namely the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, have worked tirelessly to ensuring that we operate within the same environment and of course in line with the leadership philosophy which of course I established on my appointment as the Chief of Defence Staff which is to foster a, professionally, um, a professional armed force that is capable of meeting constant imperatives and of course I'll, you know, within the framework of this leadership focus is the need for all the services to work in unity because the current and future threats that we confront or that, that we uh, contend with are those that require the services of one or not less than two uh, uh, services. General Loki Rabo leads a team of dedicated service chiefs who share a similar vision and are committed to the task. Talking about strategic leadership, we start with the President Commander-in-Chief who has given every time clear directive to the Army and to the Armed Forces and all of us. The instructions to us are clear and it's on that uh, that provided the compass for our light of march. The Minister of Defense also, our Minister is there. Then coming to our own, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Erabo, he has been uh, very effectively harnessing and coordinating all our activities and providing necessary leadership required to coordinate and harness all the activities of the armed forces. The Chief of Defense Staff uh, strategic leadership um, is, uh, is anchored on a leadership philosophy which um, highlights a clear direction and guiding principle uh, of conduct behavior and uh, a roadmap for action. This has helped to foster the homogeneous, highly motivated, disciplined and uh, mission-ready armed forces um, of Nigeria. These guidance and philosophy trickles down in all fronts of the armed forces operations, including Operation Hadin K, Hadar Indaji, Save Heaven, Wild Stroke, Operation Thunderstrike, Operation Delta Safe and Operation Awasi. Uh, our operations across all the theaters uh, 
is witnessing a lot of progress and achievements. Uh, if you take all the theaters starting from the northeast, our troops have been conducting their operations and with a lot of successes across board. And uh, the situation speaks for itself uh, in the northeast. Uh, and all the areas we are conducting operations. We are not saying that there are no, no uh, sparingly some attempt by these criminals to make a statement, especially by attacking sub-target and communities. Uh, even then, also, we are on pursuit of them all. So the operations are going on, and we are continuing, we are not relenting. And every time, uh, uh, revisiting and strategizing uh, how to make them even more effective. A critical success in the protracted insurgency operations is the ongoing mass surrendering of terrorists Within the period of May 2021 to January 2022, a total of 24,059 terrorists and their families surrendered to troops of Operation Hadding K in different parts of the Northeast. These persons have been profiled and handed over to appropriate authorities for further action. Yeah, let me state here that the present and the future state of Nigerian Air Force are of strategic importance to our national as well as regional security. The contribution of the Nigerian Air Force to Operation Lafayette, which has degraded the activities of Boko Haram element in the northeast of the country, lay credence to this assertion. Bearing in mind that the future can only be built on a solid foundation of the present, the Nigerian Force under my watch has been able to adopt measures and policies towards enhancing our Air Force air warfare potential. While these successes have been recorded, the armed forces have experienced challenges on several fronts. However, one way through which some of these challenges have been surmounted is through human capacity development and developing viable research and development departments. Now we have received a lot of uh, equipment recently and all along. We cannot appreciate enough the President Commander-in-Chief for all his support in terms of providing our necessary requirement. The President Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammad Buhari, has never relented. The another thing we have asked that he has not provided or make effort to provide. So it's in that way that we have gotten uh, everything we are getting and we are still receiving and inducting a lot of equipment in the theaters. And that account, to a great extent also, for the successes we are recording uh, across the theaters of operation. In uh, research and development, which is also cheat development, uh, we are not relenting. Along with other services and the defense headquarters, we are also uh, keen in, into that. If you recall, during our last two Army staff uh, annual conference in Abuja here, we had an exhibition where we displayed a lot of efforts, indigenous that we are doing. Indigenous in tandem with Mr. President Directive, what we are doing to improve across all sectors of our uh, development. The Nigerian Navy has also continued to record massive milestones in maritime security as well as in joint operations with sister services. Deploying a trinity of actions, the Nigerian Navy in the year 2021 succeeded in emplacing a conducive environment for legitimate maritime businesses. The Falcon Eye project, which was commissioned by the Vice President Professor Emil Simbanjo, and in conjunction with the Nigerian Navy ships and helicopters has ensured round-the-clock surveillance of the nation's maritime environment leading to significant arrests such as the MV Chayeni Nari. The Nigerian Navy also undertook several major operations singly and jointly leading to the lowest level of piracy and other criminal activities in the nation's maritime in the last 27 years as acknowledged by the International Maritime Bureau. Also as a major gain in maritime law enforcement, the nation's new anti-piracy law successfully passed behind bars, 10 pirates involved in the hijack of MV Hailufeng II to cap up a highly successful year. His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari commissioned and inducted a total of 121 ships, boats and an AW-139 helicopter, platforms and assets that will certainly guarantee improved maritime security in 2022 and the years ahead. Uh, notably, the 
Falco I system was instrumental to the recent arrest of uh, merchant vessels. We had the MV Chayani Nari and the MV Kataria. Well celebrated in the public space, like you know. These vessels were tracked and diligently monitored from their ports of departure in Brazil, following intelligence reports that they were involved in the smuggling of cocaine into the country. We were given this information by the Interpol. The Falcon asset provides an enabling environment for maritime trade and, of course, uh, for commerce to thrive. Uh, evidently, the Falco I system constitutes uh, a potential prospect for operationalizing the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. In terms of manpower development, whatever we do in terms of inducting new systems and platform, not much will be achieved if we neglect the men and women who operate them. There is therefore the need for us to embark on massive manpower development program for all specialists of the service locally and abroad. This is coupled with the need to increase the manpower holding to enable the service better fulfill its responsibility in line with emerging national security challenges. In the area of technological development, the Nigerian Air Force will aim to improve the underlying technologies to, to meet both defense and commercial needs in order to have less problem convincing governments to commit more resources for development of air power. Nigeria's armed forces are a pivotal element of the nation's foreign policy and so maintains a very healthy relationship with the international community. It explores these relationships in areas like international collaborations and joint task forces. This has helped the country tackle some of its challenges which have international dimensions like terrorism and piracy. The Nigerian Navy recognizes the importance of collaboration with uh, other navies in the sub-region as well as other law enforcement agencies to effectively combat piracy and other threats in the sub-region's uh, maritime environment. I recall that the Nigerian Navy Transformation Plan 2021-2030 identifies interagency and sub-regional cooperation as one of its pillars. Uh, notably among um, those thematic areas, the Nigerian Navy is uh, actively involved in regional maritime security collaborative engagements under the auspices of the 2013 year on the Code of Conduct, which prioritizes cooperation and information sharing between the neighbors of ECOWAS and ECA states. Of course, to this end, the, the navies of ECOWAS Zone E, comprising Benin Republic, Nigeria, Togo, and the Gendarmerie of Niger Republic, have endorsed an MOU for combined patrol of their common maritime domain. One area where Nigeria's armed forces have seen a rapid transformation is in the investments in the modernization in terms of military platforms and equipment. Financial support by the President Muhammadu Buhari led administration have led to the acquisition of very sophisticated military hardware. It cannot uh, be, be um, discounted that what we now have has never been like this before. There is incremental support, of course, within the matrix of the resources available to government. And that's why, um, for a keen observer, we have uh, you know, noticed that there is you know, an incremental provisioning for the, the members of the armed forces, for them to undertake their tax in such a manner that will ensure effectiveness and efficiency. And so um, the uh, level of training or reprofessionalization as it were, which of course involves training, equipment, 
of course welfare and other enablers have been you know thanks to the very committed effort of the federal government led by His Excellency Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief. The Nigerian Air Force has contributed significantly to the successes recorded in the fight against insurgency, terrorism, armed banditry and other forms of criminality in the country. These have been largely due to the unprecedented support by President Muhammadu Buhari in the acquisition of new platforms reactivation of existing ones as well as effective collaboration with sister security agencies. In the last one year, the Nigerian Air Force has taken delivery and inducted its order of Battle 15 brand new aircraft and unmanned combat aerial vehicles including three JF-17 Thunder multi-role fighter aircraft, 12 A-29 Super Tucano aircraft and unmanned combat aerial vehicles to increase its operational capabilities. Its involvement in both joint and independent operations to project air power in support of operations Hadin K, Hadarin Daji, Thunderstrike, Safe Haven, Awate, and Delta Safe has also seen Nigerian Air Force Special Forces elements fighting side by side with other services and security agencies in the various theaters of operations. It is gratifying to note that the current administration of the President Mohamed Bouhari has acquired new and modern platforms such as the Super Michal uh, Trainer aircraft, the MI-35M and the Augusta 109 helicopter as well as the MI-171E in order to effectively and efficiently orchestrate current and future air operations of the Air Force. Residents speak on the activities of the armed forces in areas where operations are presently being conducted. The situation is, uh, has really improved over the last five years. And I, I can really say that now about 80% uh, people are, 80% we are happy with the security situation in this world. Maybe there is only once in a while that we had, uh, we had the bomb blast or attack that we used to normally have in areas of, but now that inside the town, we are normally, we go to market, we go to our working places, each and every day. We don't have any fear of everyone. We go to the mugs, we pray, we go to the market without even fearing that uh, someone else is carrying uh, bomb in his uh, body. Uh, if you consider the closure of the IDP, IDPs are returning them back to their uh, places. It's one of the great achievements considering the previous years. We appreciate their efforts. We will say a very big thank you to the Nigerian army. They have tried hard and we are urging them and encouraging them to keep more efforts for lasting peace and uh, making uh, their previous glory of Borno State to become its normal, non-usual uh, home of peace. While the armed forces have remained active and resolute on the front lines, there have been numerous programs inspired by its leadership to improve capacity and boost operational efficiency on all fronts. In the regional front, the armed forces of Nigeria continues to maintain its leading role at the Multinational Joint Task Force. The force commander on November 20, 2021 hosted a joint delegation from the French military intelligence and another from the United States Africa Command. Nigeria contributed immensely to international peace and security efforts with its robust participation on the continent. As part of the leadership philosophy aimed at strengthening joint effort and operational efficiency, the armed forces of Nigeria for the first time held a defense headquarters joint operations planning exercise at the Army War College Abuja. Tagged Skylock 2021, the exercise kick-started a tradition in the services war colleges that engenders joint planning in the military operational leadership level. Another first under this leadership is the recognition of the veritable role of military veterans in the military's scheme of things. This was exemplified in the various interactive sessions with military veterans across the geopolitical zones. Christened the Chief of Defense Staff Interactive Session with retired senior military officers, the party that is the first of its kind under General Loki Rabo was held in all geopolitical zones. In all the meetings, the message was the same, getting the military veterans to continually contribute 
from their experiences as members of this bastion of Nigeria's unity and sovereignty. In compliance with the National Gender Policy Directive of ensuring women form 35% of the workforce, the Defense Headquarters launched a gender policy for the armed forces aimed at eliminating any limitation that could hinder the self-actualization of female personnel of the services. The humanitarian efforts of the armed forces gained more traction through the activities of Defense and Police Officers' Wives Association, DEPOA. In September 2021, DEPOA, in collaboration with the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, flagged off Project Zero Hunger with the distribution of food and non-food items to vulnerable persons of concern. The items were handed out to the recipients, including widows of fallen service personnel in Abuja and Nasara State. Also during the year, the association distributed wheelchairs and equipment like the fibrillator to the wounded at the Nigerian Army Reference Hospital in Kaduna. The armed forces of Nigeria continues to play leading roles in unifying the country and upholding its sovereignty. This is exemplified in the sacrifices of serving personnel and their retired colleagues. A number of military personnel have paid the supreme prize across the various theaters of operations so that the country can remain one indivisible entity. For these officers and men who have made these invaluable contributions to this bastion of Nigeria's unity and sovereignty, the nation remains indebted.